Here on Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report, I'm Amy Goodman with Nermeen Sheikh. During Wednesday's House Foreign Affairs Committee hearing on Venezuela, the new U.S. Special Envoy to Venezuela, Elliot Abrams, faced intense questioning from Democratic New York Congress member Adriano Espiat. Allies have expressed concern of your appointment uh, to deal with this problem. Some char have characterized it as being perhaps like appointing Exxon to lead a discussion on the Green New Deal or maybe even appointing MBS to lead a discussion on fairness in journalism and accessibility to journalism. Uh, do you feel that your past actions in Iran contract have permanently impaired your ability to fairly and transparently uh, deal in the region since we all know the outcome of, of what happened then. Do you feel that that's a major problem, baggage, that you bring to the table? I don't, and I've been now. I've been doing this job for two whole weeks. Um, and I can tell you that uh, members of Congress have raised it. No Latin American of any nationality with whom I have dealt has raised it. We've had lots and lots of discussions about how we're going to promote democracy in Venezuela. Uh, I guess I should say, since I've been attacked now three times in my own defense, if you look at the Reagan record of eight years, when we came in, there were military dictatorships Mr. Abrams, all that's not over an attack. Latin that's a fact of America. history. And when we left, in country after country after country, there had been transitions that we supported. Chile is a very good example. So I think it's actually a record of promoting democracy, well, I, and I think a lot of respect know that. I differ with you. I think it's a fact of history. We should not dig our heads in the sand and make believe that this never happened, because it did. And you were at the helm of that. And you, I was at the helm of promoting democracy in Latin well, America. You may want to that. characterize it that way, but I don't. Democratic New York Congress member Adriano Espaillat questioning Elliot Abrams, the new U.S. Special Envoy to Venezuela. We're joined now by the journalist Roberto Lovato, who has been closely following the situation in Venezuela. In 2015, he profiled the Venezuelan opposition leader, Leopoldo López, in Foreign Policy magazine. From El Salvador, he certainly knows what took place in the 1980s in U.S. policy in El Salvador and Nicaragua. Roberto Lovato, overall, your response to what took place yesterday, Elliot Abrams, on the hot seat. He was protested by Code Pink and others in the hearing room and then questioned by, among others, uh, Ilhan Omar and, as we just heard, um, Espaillat. Uh, hi, Amy. Uh, hi, Nermeen. Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, when I see Elliot Abrams on in front of Congress, it stirs my subconscious. And I think it stirs the subconscious of the entire country that that, that wants to forget but won't and shouldn't forget what happened in Central America in the 1980s. So many of the actors, many of the tactics and strategies, many of the, the uh, uh, political alliances we're seeing around Venezuela have already, uh, you know, that's why you bring in Elliot Abrams, a, a cold warrior, a dirty warrior. Uh, so my reaction is I, I start remembering my most recent visit to the forensics labs in El Salvador. Uh, where I saw uh, the skulls that they're still processing of little children killed in El Mosote. Uh, the, as we speak right now, in El Mosote, today, they're starting another round of exhumations and, and, and digging after 30 years of El Mosote, where nearly almost a thousand people were killed, including many, mostly women, children, and elderly people. And 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 uh, I would the just El correct Mazzotte some of the Congress members to say that it wasn't just El Mazzotte massacre. You have the entire landscape of El Salvador massacre was, uh, you know, dotted with mass graves because of massacres of entire towns. And then you have Guatemala, right, where towns, Mayan towns mostly, were, were entirely wiped out, in just like in El Mazzotte. So, and, and you have the Contra War in Nicaragua. So when I see Elliot Abrams, I have a very, uh, you know, visceral reaction, and I have to kind of breathe in and really uh, just can't. I, 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 if I wasn't this old, uh, I would be in. I would I would sigh in disbelief. But I just it just confirms that uh, the United States is in decline. He's clearly a sign of U.S. degeneracy, and his appointment shows that 
the Trump administration is willing to re unleash the darkest forces in U.S. modern history for war, destabilization, and uh, death squads. Uh, so uh, that's my reaction. Well, uh, can you uh, say specifically, Roberto, what was Elliot Abrams' role and knowledge of these massacres that you've pointed to in, in El Salvador, Guatemala, and, and Nicaragua? Yeah, uh, I would point people to look at his titles that he gets. Like, he, his, his title, his first title under the Reagan administration was Assistant Secretary for Human Rights and Humanitarian Affairs. So there's a lot of human in Elliot Abrams' titles. But in terms of the policies, he was primarily focused on the inhuman, right? The mass graves, the supporting governments and militaries like that of Efra, Efrain Rios Montt, who the United Nations and the Guatemalan Supreme Court more recently declared responsible for—and the Guatemalan government responsible for genocide. So, Elliot Abrams, even after it was clear the acts were perpetrated, uh, defended, helped get funding for, went before Congress and to the American people to say, hey, you know, this is our guy. And the guy that Ronald Reagan called uh, said had gotten a, quote, bum rap because of uh, uh, criticisms on his human rights record for killing thousands of, of, of mines. So in El Salvador, similarly, after, for example, uh, after the wars ended and you have the United Nations Truth Commission report in 1993. Uh, you know, finds that the government that Ronald Reagan and Elliot Abrams backed uh, unconditionally throughout the early 80s, uh, that perpetrated massacres and, and wiping out entire towns, had perpetrated 85 percent of the killings of civilians during the war. So Elliot Abrams, after that report came out, that quote that, that Il, uh, Ilhan Omar made, uh, mentioned about the fabulous achievement, he was, his response to the United Nations Truth Commission report was to say that the United States' uh, accomplishments in El Salvador were, quote, a fabulous accomplishment. So we're dealing with severely dark forces, and, and we're dealing with a situation where not just dark forces out of the United States, but dark forces in Latin America that are linked to extreme violence are now having suits and ties put on them and put out as as leaders of, of this new Venezuela that they want. And we want to talk uh, about Venezuela, people... uh, Roberto, but I want to go back to 1995. This was, what, uh, something like four years after Elliot Abrams was uh, uh, pled guilty to lying to Congress. Um, 1995, when investigative journalist Alan Nairn and Elliot Abrams appeared on The Charlie Rose Show on PBS, the clip begins with Alan Nairn. Let's look at reality here. In reality, we're not talking about two murders, one colonel. We're talking about a hundred, more than 100,000 murders, an entire army, many of its top officers, employees of the U.S. Uh, government. We're talking about crimes, and we're also talking about criminals, not just uh, people like the Guatemalan uh, colonels, but also the U.S. agents who've been working with them, and the higher-level uh, U.S. officials. I mean, I think you have to be—you have to apply uniform standards. President Bush one took, once talked about putting Saddam Hussein on trial for crimes against humanity, Nuremberg-style tribunal. I think that's a good idea. But if you're serious, you have to be even-handed. If we look at a case like this, I think we have to talk, start talking about putting Guatemalan and U.S. officials on trial. I think someone like Mr. Abrams would be a fit uh, a subject for such a Nuremberg-style <laughs> inquiry. But I agree with Mr. Abrams that Democrats would have to be in the dock with him. The uh, Congress has been uh, in on this. The Congress approved the sale of 16,000 M-16s to Guatemala in 87 and uh, 88. Hold on one second. I just, before, because they, they voted more military been, aid than the Republicans asked for. And again, I invite you and Elliot Abrams back to discuss what he uh, did. But right thanks, now, Charlie. But you, I, 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 I hold on one second, the, Elliot. Go ahead. You want to repeat the I question just, of I you mean, want to be in the dock? It is ludicrous. It is ludicrous to respond to that kind of stupidity. This guy thinks we were on the wrong side in the Cold War. Maybe he personally was on the wrong side. Uh, I am one of the many millions of Americans. Right, who Mr. Abrams, I don't we're on the wrong side in supporting the massacre of, of no. peasants and organizers. What I want to do is to I want to ask the following Absolutely. question, and that's a crime. That's a crime, Mr. Abrams, for which people should be tried. So that's Elliot Abrams being challenged by journalist Alan Nairn on The Charlie Rose Show some, well, more than 20 years ago. Um, and now he is the new point person on Venezuela. 
Roberto Lovato, you have closely tracked the Venezuelan opposition, and we want to go to that right now. On Wednesday, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi tweeted, This afternoon, I spoke with Ambassador Carlos Vecchio of Venezuela, discussing the relationship between our two countries and reiterating America's support for the people of Venezuela as they seek a brighter, freer future for their nation. Can you talk about Carlos Vecchio and the others in the opposition? Of course, uh, Juan Guaido, who is the head of the National Assembly, declaring himself president, and then immediately um, the United States recognizing his presidency over the democratically elected leader, uh, President Maduro. Well, I think the first thing, when you're talking about the Venezuelan opposition, you have to understand that it's a broad spectrum that represents socialists and leftists who are, who are critical of Maduro, to people that are in the middle, to the extreme right and to the extreme right that's violent. The part that the United States—and you can see pictures of Elliot Abrams meeting with some of the people like Antonio Ledesma or David Smolansky, who I tried to interview, but he avoided me, and I'll, I'll talk about that, and um, others, including Mr. Vecchio, you're talking about the extreme right, and so extreme, in fact, that the right wing—some of the right wing in Venezuela is really mad at at Guaido and the people around the Voluntad Popular Party, the Popular Will Party, who have basically uh, had tight relations with the extreme right here in the United States. So it's no coincidence that you're going to get somebody as dark and nefarious as Elliot Abrams meeting with the extreme and violent right. Uh, they were in the streets. They're part of a generation that some call Los Cachorros de la Reacción, the Cubs of Reaction, the Reactionary Cubs. These are people that, with U.S. funding through USAID uh, and other programs, got training in, 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 in mobilization for protests and, 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 and what used to be, according to one of my sources in the intelligence community, what used to be covert operations have now gone overt through the State Department and State Department programs. And so one of those programs, for example, is the um, funding of youth programs, which um, started, like, with, with a group called Artpor in Serbia, who, they, who the U.S. Uh, has used as a trainer for youth groups in with, with destabilization programs. And so um, there's groups like one in my article called Havu uh, that uh, has, has was in the streets during the 2014 uh, uh, violence, uh, which both sides killed people, but you only heard you know, the government killing, the, the, the youth groups were, were, were staging um, violent actions in the streets called guarimbas, and then the guarimbas resulted in black people being burned to death, being burned, being, being uh, lit on fire. It resulted in bombings. There were uh, assassinations of chavistas. There was a man that I interviewed whose son, uh, Elvis Duran, was beheaded by barbed wire set by this peaceful opposition that you're seeing on your screen. So Vecchio uh, and others in the Voluntad Popular Party are linked to these extremely violent uh, protests. And, and you can even see on YouTube, and Max uh, Blumenthal at Mint Press uh, put out a, uh, a video of Juan Guaido in the Guariba, where he's dressed up like all the other violent youth. So, uh, again, you have Elliot Abrams, somebody who is a certifiable uh, criminal against humanity, meeting with uh, formerly visibly violent youth who are now suited and tied, and meeting with Nancy Pelosi, meeting with Trump administration officials, meeting with presidents of Colombia, meeting in Europe, getting human rights prizes. I mean, this is—I teach at UCLA, I teach a class in, in, in media. And, and I, I'm just getting a, a, um, a cornucopia of manufactured consent, because I can't think of a clear example when you have Elliot Abrams talking about democracy with, in terms of youth that is known to be linked to extreme and even terrorist elements, if you're talking about somebody like a young man named Laurent Saleh, S-A-L-E-H. You can see him on YouTube. Laurent Saleh uh, was, is out there meeting with— uh, presidents with—he just met with Alvaro Uribe, a man who's 
I, we don't need to tell you, Amy, you know, 10,000 people were killed, according to a report, by Alvaro Uribe's government in Colombia, but there was no invasion. So Saleh uh, uh, was, is out there meeting, but if you look on YouTube, you can find videos where he was caught plotting assassination attempts, plotting bombings, plotting all manner of what we, in this context, would call a terrorist, terrorist actions. So um, this is the kind of manufactured consent we have going on right now. Well, on Wednesday's uh, House hearing on Venezuela came less than a week after McClatchy reported that Venezuelan authorities uncovered 19 assault weapons, 118 ammunition cartridges, and 90 military-grade radio antennas on board a U.S.-owned plane that had flown from Miami into Valencia, Venezuela's third largest city. The Boeing 767 is owned by a company called 21 Air, which is owned by a man who once ran companies tied the CIA's rendition program. The plane has made nearly 40 round-trip flights between Miami and spots in Venezuela and Colombia since January 11th, the day after Venezuelan President Nicolás Maduro was sworn into a second term. Congressman Joaquín Castro questioned Elliot Abrams Wednesday about the report. And Mr. Abrams, I have a question for you. My question is whether you're aware of any transfers of weapons or defense equipment by the United States government to groups in Venezuela opposed to Nicolas Maduro since you were appointed special representative for Venezuela? No. And I want to be respectful of you, but also honest. The reason that I asked that question, there's been a McClatchy news report of such an incident. Have you, are you aware of that news report? Saw the report, yes. I asked this question because you have a record of such actions. In Nicaragua, you were involved in the effort to covertly provide lethal aid to the Contras against the will of Congress. You ultimately pled guilty to two counts of withholding information from Congress in, re in regard to your testimony during the Iran-Contra scandal. So I ask you the question, can we trust your testimony today? Well, you can make that decision for yourself, Mr. Castro. I can tell you that the answer to your question is no. It's a simple uh, an unequivocal no, uh, there's been no such uh, transfer of arms. So that was Texas Congressman Joaquin Castro questioning Elliot Abrams on Wednesday. Uh, Roberto, can you respond to that, that, the report, the McClatchy report on these uh, uh, weapons found, allegedly found on U.S. planes uh, uh, headed from Miami to Valencia and Venezuela? Yeah, you had like 19 semi-automatic weapons, some radios and other equipment that we don't have the full yet chart of what was on that plane, but the Venezuelan government has put out, you know, Ill, you know, weapons and things that they say uh, were, were, were found uh, by a company called uh, 21 Air that has links to another company called Gemini, which, oddly enough, take us back to 1986, when the CIA was caught and Abrams were caught transferring arms to the Nicaraguan Contras to perpetrate crimes against humanity against thousands of Nicaraguan civilians. So, again, you have the political unconscious of the United States being stirred, and I'm hoping that my peers in the media will start doing like that McClatchy reporter, who I think, you know, is doing his job as, a, as an investigative journalist and digging deep to find out who are these people behind our policies, but also who are these people in Venezuela that we're funding that everybody says, hey, I've never heard of Juan Guaido. Well, you can look on YouTube and you can see that he was involved in violent guarimbas. Why aren't you reporting these things? That's my challenge to my peers in the press, you know, and to use their, their, their investigative budgets to go and find out, like we used to do, who, who, who's who in, in this thing, instead of propping up the uh, talking points, pushing the talking points of the Trump administration. I mean, and, 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 and Roberto, sadly, we have even 20 the, seconds. the sector of the progressive community is, instead of mounting a powerful anti-intervention movement against people like Elliot Abrams, they're actually joining Trump in this adventure. And it's curious, to say the least. Well, Roberto Lovato, we want to thank you for being with us. Uh, we will, of course, continue to cover the developments in Venezuela. Roberto Lovato is an independent journalist working out of the San Francisco Writers Grotto. He's reported from Latin America, is from there. In 2015, he wrote a piece for Foreign Policy magazine on the Venezuelan opposition headlined The Making of Leopoldo Lopez. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. We'll be back in a minute.